We have two hands. Three. Four. How many people are present? 700. In 2000, was it four? The tsunami hit the Indian Ocean Rim. Nearly 300,000 people died. Many of you are from the Philippines, Indonesia. By a show of hands, how many of us cried? Can I see your hands? Cried. Yeah, about a dozen hands. September 11, 2001, two planes crashed into the World Trade Towers. About 3,000 people died. How many cried? A few more hands. Let me not prolong this. What am I trying to say? If what leaves us unfazed today had happened in Adam's day, Adam would have fainted. We are suffering from a case of spiritual numbness. In Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4, Ezekiel has this vision of God coming to execute judgment on Jerusalem. And there's an angel that has an acorn and he's about to go through the city. And the Bible says in Ezekiel 9 4, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that do what? Sigh. And what? Cry. Cry. For what? All the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. God's seal will be placed on those who suffer as a result of sin. Not, I don't mean suffer because they sin, but they suffer because they sin. Most Christians are not faced at all by the fact that there is sin in this world. We go about our business, we're busy, we're absorbed, pursuing a career, securing ourselves in this life whatever it is that occupies our time and we do not have a deep reaction to something that brought suffering to heaven set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry my brothers and sisters if we are not broken hearted over sin, something is wrong. There's no difference how many offices you hold in the church. And how many generations you go back who are Adventists or Baptists or whatever you may be. There is a global numbness among so-called believers that leaves them unaffected by sin. We sometimes think of Lot as a shaky character, but the Bible describes Lot as righteous and just, the same thing. And in 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 7 and 8, the Bible says that God delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the righteous. Verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Bible said that Lot suffered. He was hurt. He was bothered by sin. He was not numb. But the tragedy is it is not that there's a general numbness towards sin. There's a numbness towards sin in the church. Church discipline is fast disappearing. You can do whatever you like and there's no discipline. People have this strange argument if you discipline members, you're not loving. Are you listening to me? 
in the church, there seems to be a callousness regarding sin. I hesitate to give examples. I don't want to embarrass anyone. But you can do a number of things in the church and not be disfellowshipped. And I mean, you pick any of the Ten Commandments. You can break them and no action is taken because people tend to see nothing wrong. Or if they see something wrong, it is just small. What's the big deal I was talking to a friend of mine in another country and um, how should I say this this thing goes all over the world <laughs> she had a child with a man who was not of the church and um, I was talking to her, but I saw her afterwards. And she said, church members are encouraging her to marry the man. And their reasoning is, he's the father. You might as well marry him. Now, the Adventist church has a standing policy. Adventists must not marry non-Adventists. But for convenience sake, this young lady is advised by members. You have his child, you might as well marry him. So try to make a right by adding one wrong to another. There is a numbness. Another young lady spoke to me in another country which will remain unnamed and she was distressed you know how the older sisters like to press the young ladies get married get married and the pressure leads some to make catastrophic decisions but in other parts of the world it's not just get married the pressure is also have a child have a child have a child so this lady came up to this young lady and said, you're 27, 28, you have no children. What's the problem? She said, well, I don't have a husband. The member told her, why don't you have a child with one of the elders? Because married men are safe. And she was so distressed. How could a member of the church a woman whose husband is an elder give that kind of catastrophic, soul-destroying advice because there is a numbness in the church to sin. A young lady wrote me an email. I'm under pressure to work on Sabbath. I wrote back in very direct language. Don't do it. Don't even discuss it. And so for weeks, she had this struggle, job, the employees, were, employers were trying to pressure her, don't work. They threatened to fire her, I said, don't work. It's not really I'm saying that, God is saying that, don't work. So she called her parents, who were long-standing Adventists. Mom, Dad, I'm under pressure. They want me to work on Sabbath. <laughs> you can guess what the parents said. What do you think they said? Work. You're young. You have to establish yourself. You need a home. You need this. Work. There is a numbness in the church. A couple of refugees from another country migrated to the United States. They're living in Minnesota somewhere. And they wrote me because I had been in contact with them from the previous country. They said, we're here, we don't, have, we don't have work yet, but we're living with some friends. I believe the friends are Adventists. They said, we keep getting job offers, but the offers require work on Sabbath and we won't do it. And our friends with whom we're staying are about to put us out because they're saying we are wasting.